Are you currently working on your PhD statement of purpose and need some guidance? In this video, I share with you a successful statement of purpose for the PhD in neuroscience at John Hopkins University. Throughout the video, I share tips and advice to help you write a strong statement of purpose for PhD programs. Before we get into the video, I do offer a statement of purpose review service on the freelance platform called Fiverr, which is linked down below. With my service, I provide constructive feedback and guidance to help you get into your dream programs. I look forward to working with you. I am fascinated by the way that the myriad connections of the brain form a city of neural highways in our heads, giving rise to the high cognitive processes that define human character and capacity. Enabled by the opportunities afforded by the rigorous research specialist program in psychology at the University of Toronto, I have developed a passion for cognitive neuroscience research. I have continually sought out current debates in the field, demonstrating creativity and persistence as I work to bring my ideas to fruition. With the guidance of my mentors, I have proposed and designed three distinct programs of research, leading to a poster presentation at this year's Society for Neuroscience conference and several first author papers currently under review and in preparation. Moreover, I am engaged as an active member of the scientific community, regularly attending guest lectures and conferences. Above all, I am drawn to cognitive neuroscience by the compelling and ecologically valid research questions as well as the distinctly challenging methodological puzzles. In the introduction of the statement of purpose, I really like that we know what we're going to expect to read more about in the rest of the statement of purpose. As as a reminder, the introduction serves as a blueprint for the reader, for the committee. So in the introduction, your goal should be to provide the larger theme of what they should expect to read more about in the rest of the statement of purpose. Usually in the introduction, you include your research goals, your research interest, your career goal, the program that you want to apply to, and why you want to apply to that program. In this case, the author did not do exactly that, but we still know what exactly the author is going to talk more about in the rest of the statement of purpose and that is their involvement in research from the creation the ideation of their ideas to the findings and the endpoints the publications the conferences and so this author is telling us as readers and the committee that they're going to frame their entire statement of purpose on their research experiences so i expect that in every paragraph that they include including the statement of purpose, they are going to talk about a different research opportunity that they were involved in. As a first year student, I was selected for a competitive seminar on the rhetoric, methodology, and philosophy of science. The culmination of this program was the completion of a 9,000 word mock grant proposal, extensively researched, designed, and written over a five month period. Under the mentorship of Dr. Morgan Barentz, I delved into the memory literature and designed an original study about social cognitive influences on memory reconsolidation. This early opportunity inspired me to pursue psychological research and cultivated my interest in the malleability of human memory. I refined my scientific writing skills over the course of the seminar program, learning to effectively convey my ideas, justify a program of research, and develop informed hypotheses. Okay, so in this paragraph here, we learn about their involvement in a mock grant proposal seminar where they they produced a mock research proposal and I really like that they included this because as a PhD student and a future professor and researcher one of your jobs is going to have to be to write research grant proposals to garner in research funding and so this is telling the committee that the author already has some experience with research grant writing which is gonna help them as a PhD student and beyond that as a professor and researcher so the author does doesn't just state that they were part of this program. They actually explain what the proposal is about. And so they mention that the proposal is about memory literature and social cognitive influences on memory reconsolidation. So this is telling the reader what they wrote about extensively for the five month period. Then at the end of this paragraph, they describe the writing skills they gained and how they're gonna apply that to their work as a PhD student. I also wanna mention that author, 
mentioned their mentor. Over the course of two years, I have been reading statement of purpose for clients that I have. And a lot of them make the mistake of not including the mentor that they worked with on these projects. It is important to include them in your writing because you never know who is on the committee. It is possible that some of the search committee members might have worked or partnered or collaborated with your mentor. And that can give you a second eye to your application or a second look into you as a student in their program. So make sure that you are writing in who you were supervised and who was mentoring you in your research projects or in any project that you do, whether it's the practical or research end. In the years following, I have continued to pose novel research questions and designed original experimental paradigms. In my thesis research project, under the supervision of Dr. Berenz, I am investigating the neural substraints of episodic memory reconciliation in humans. For the first time, we have demonstrated that prediction error governs whether naturalistic memories will dynamically adapt to accommodate new information. By synthesizing ideas from prior rodent and human research, we generated novel hypotheses about complex human cognition and uncovered a new phenomenon on episodic memory. Extending these behavioral findings, which we have submitted for publication, we are currently piloting an fMRI adaptation of the paradigm. In this paragraph, the author talks about their undergraduate thesis. Again, they mention who they were supervised and it was the same supervisor from the previous experience, which was Dr. Berenz. Then they talk about what they actually did with the project. What did, what did they research? So in this part, you can either mention the topic or your research questions. So they say that they were investigating the neural substraints of episodic memory reconciliation in humans. Then they go about briefly describing how they did that. So it looks like they use rodents and past human research to consolidate and extract their findings. Then the author talks about the impact of the work. So this work is leading to publication as well as a pilot of an fMRI adaptation. So make sure when you're explaining your research projects and research experiences that you include your research questions, the topics, the methodologies, the findings, and the impact that your work is going to make or is already making, whether that's publications, conference presentations, or some type of practical application. Additionally, as a member of Dr. William Cunningham's lab, I am conducting two programs of research. First, we are investigating stereotype and social category formation using the sustained computational model of category learning and a dynamical systems framework. We will assess how the accumulation of experience over time and individual differences in personality predict stereotype resiliency. Second, I have proposed an fMRI study to test the controversial theory that the neural substraints of physical and social pain, example rejection, overlap in the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex. My novel paradigm elicits both physical and social pain within a single task, offering the means to resolve inconclusive and controversial existing evidence. We will also adapt this paradigm to test whether social support attenuates the experiences of physical pain, example social based theory. So in this paragraph, we learn about a third research experience. This time, it's in Dr. William Cunningham's lab. Again, the researcher explains the topic, subject, or questions that they were investigating. In this case, they had two different projects. One of them was investigating stereotype and social category formation, and then the other one was a study on the fMRI to test the controversial theory that the neural substraints of physical and social pain overlap in the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex. For the first research study, they talk about what type of frameworks they're using. So they're going to be utilizing a sustained computational model of category learning and a dynamical systems framework. So this is giving the, the committee an idea of how they're utilizing frameworks, theories, methodological approaches to approach their work. And that's showing the committee that they are prepared to become a PhD student and a possible professor and researcher. As a PhD student, remember, you're going to be conducting research, you're going to be presenting your research, you're going to be writing grants, you're going to be reading the larger body of literature. So in your statement of purpose, I want you to show the committee how you're preparing to be able to be a successful PhD student. In addition to my proven success with formulating research questions and developing original paradigms, I have also contributed to other stages of the research process. Over the past three years, I have gained varied and interdisciplinary experience, conducting research in 
cognitive neuroscience, computational effect neuroscience, and social cognition. I have constructively contributed to lab meetings, programmed and executed experiments, prepared stimuli, administered neuropsychological assessments, and conducted statistical analyses. Furthermore, I have applied my presentation skills to my scientific endeavors. For seven years, I have pursued my love of the performing arts through theater and choir. Drawing on this extensive experience, I have gained confidence and clarity in public speaking. I have effectively communicated my research findings by writing papers, giving talks, lecturing, and presenting first author posters at several conferences. At the Toronto Area Memory Group Conference, I earned an award for my critical contributions to discussion, demonstrating my aptitude for constructive scientific discourse. I also received the Astounding Poster Presentation Award at the Neuro Exchange Conference, reflecting my speaking abilities. So in this paragraph, the author provides more of a list of things that they have done to prepare to be successful as a PhD student, researcher, and scientist. So they list out some of the things that they have already done, such as interdisciplinary experiences, conducting research in cognitive neuroscience, computational neuroscience, social cognition, so the different topics that they discuss that they are well versed in or they have experience in. They have also talked about contributing to lab meetings, programmed and executed experiments, prepared stimuli, etc. So if you become a neuroscientist in the PhD programs, these are some of the things that you're gonna have to do in the lab while you're a student. And so the author is telling the committee how they already have some experience in these different areas. I also like that they bring in something different that's not neuroscience. So they talk about performing arts through theater and choir and how those skills are transferable to becoming a neuroscientist. And so they say that their performance in choir and theater have prepared them to communicate their research in different communities in their field. Then they follow that by also stating how they won a award for public speaking, presenting, and writing. And so that tells the committee that this person is ready to become a PhD student and then in the future a professor and researcher. So I want you to do the same thing in your statement of purpose. I want you to show the committee by providing examples and telling your story of how you're prepared to be a PhD student in the program of your dreams. At this year's Society for Neuroscience Conference, I had the pleasure of meeting Dr. Janice Chen and Dr. Chris Honey from John Hopkins University. I found their research interest to be highly compatible with mine, particularly with regards to prediction error and episodic memory. I was especially drawn to the way in which Dr. Chen emphasizes naturalistic stimuli and narrative comprehension, similar to the, me the methodology of my thesis research on episodic memory reconciliation. I was also fascinated by Dr. Honey's work on prediction error and hierarchical processing. I appreciate his emphasis on investigating research questions with multiple methodologies, synthesizing evidence from neuroimaging, intracranial recordings, and computational modeling to better characterize the phenomenon. Moving forward, I wish to continue investigating the reconstructive na nature of episodic memory as influenced by prediction error. Overall, I believe that I would greatly enjoy the collaborative nature of the department and cutting edge research methods at John Hopkins. So this is their why program, why this institution paragraph. And so the author does a really good job mentioning two faculty at John Hopkins who they want to work with. When you are mentioning two to three faculty that you want to potentially work with or be mentored by, you want to make sure that you describe what type of work they do and how their expertise is going to help advance your work as a PhD student. And so the author does a great job of connecting the faculty members' expertise with theirs. In one sentence, the author also describes what type of work they want to continue to do as a PhD student. So they say, moving forward, I wish to continue investigating the reconstructive nature of episodic memory as influenced by prediction error. This is giving the committee an idea of what type of research they're going to be conducting as a PhD student and possibly in their future career. And so what I want you to do is I want you to do the same exact thing. You can either do what this author did and just include one sentence or you can dedicate an entire paragraph to describing a mini dissertation of what you plan to do as a PhD student. If you do the former, you want to make sure that you describe your research questions or topic of interest, the methods you want to use to conduct the work, the possible hypotheses, the impact your work is going to make in the field and in the community, as well as how John, John Hopkins or whatever school you're applying to, it's going to help advance your research agenda. My undergraduate studies spanning a range of subfields within and beyond psychology have informed my understanding of how the brain supports cognition and behavior. My diverse research experience has enriched this foundation in cognitive neuroscience. 
experience, allowing me to contribute to the experimental process from study design to the communication of research findings. My exemplary faculty mentors at the University of Toronto have inspired me to pursue graduate studies and ultimately an academic career as a professor of cognitive neuroscience. I would be honored to further my research at John Hopkins University, posing and investigating new questions to better understand how the brain enables the mind. Thank you for your consideration. In the conclusion, the author reminds the reader, the committee, of what they want to do as a career. Essentially, what they're going to be doing after they, they get their PhD. And so they want to become a professor in neuroscience, in cognitive neuroscience to be specific. And so they want to pursue a PhD to be able to assume this role. They also revert back to how their mentors supported them and motivated them to pursue graduate study. And so this gives the committee an idea of why they're motivated to pursue this line of work, to pursue a PhD. All right, guys, I hope this video helped you learn a little bit about how to craft your own statement of purpose for PhD programs. Again, as a reminder, I do offer a statement of purpose review service on the freelance platform called Fiverr, which is linked down below. If you need one-on-one -on -one assistance with your statement of purpose and would greatly appreciate constructive feedback from me, please go to my Fiverr account and I will gladly help you attain your goal of pursuing a PhD program. If you want to watch more videos like this one, click on this playlist to see other reviews of Statement of Purpose that I have done on this channel. I will see you in the next video.